Hello everybody out there and welcome back to another indie comic book review. We got lots of books this week. We got 12 digital, 5 physical, and let's waste no time. The books in this review were released on June 24, 2015, the last week of June. Mm -hmm. That's right, this Wednesday yep. is the first week of July. Yep, and uh, you know, all the books are just from this week, so uh, well, further ado. Yeah, we are going to be going into some books starting next episode. Uh, that did not come out um, this week. I'm going to give a little um, mention here. So look forward to a lot of books uh, over the next couple of indie reviews that we will be uh, talking about soon, starting next week. So physical copies will start with first. Ryu! Uh, or Ryu. The Ryu. variant cover of Sonic Universe, issue number 77. First part to the uh, second row. Yes, and part 5 of 12 to the World Unite. And it's really coming out really excellent I, I do have to really say so and basically it's where um, we get the two doctors of Dr. Eggman and Dr. Wily who go into Sonic and Mega Man's universe thanks to Xander Payne's uh, portal because he was being chased by Sigma and the Deadly Six so they're all just trying to uh, figure out uh, how to defeat Sigma by the way the artwork's amazing with a little background of Sigma and He's not only merging the two worlds together, he's actually uh, trying to be uh, everything. Just basically uh, uh, a god of some sort. You know, not just being a regular uh, Retroid. And uh, the, two the two doctors team up with Sonic and Mega Man, even though Mega Man wasn't too keen about that. You know they're going to turn evil in the end, probably, because, you know, who didn't see that coming? And, um... You know, it's just their plans of just trying to... Especially because Wily was just evil. He just turned evil, and now he's a good right. man. And it's just them just trying to go against Sigma, and Mega Man X leaves uh, Sally, Cream, and Cheese as uh, navigators, since Mega Man X can't get in uh, contact with them. And Sigma, designing a uh, army of his own, uh, actually gets found out that Sonic, Mega Man, Mega Man X have found his base, and now they are going to uh, start the war and fight over him. Where is everybody? The, everybody? The, whole, the whole point of World Unite was they were supposed to be bringing in not just Mega Man and oh, Sonic. Yeah, like Sega and Capcom. It was characters. supposed to bring in the Street Fighter crew, uh, Beautiful Joe, Okami. So many characters were yeah, announced. There was actually a comment about that. Yeah, there were so many... The poster has everybody on it. That's why we got the poster, so we can have Ryu and, uh, and Ryu and Ken. And we are almost... Sorry, let me borrow this a minute. Just we are literally... Seven. We finished the first four, and we're... The next book, the next two books, uh, are going to be the middle of the story. Right. Because then it just... It's a, it's a run through the end. Technically, actually, you could say the next issue is the middle of the story. We will be halfway through um, with issue six, and still nobody has come in. I mean, are they going to make just a cameo in the last four issues? I don't know. That's not right, because they, they or, really pushed that <clears throat> all these characters were going to be maybe the next issue. Or right. just like the battles with Sonic and Mega Man, you have to buy your local comic shop. Which is really stupid because people like us don't yeah, because I have a local comic shop and I've not seen battles uh, advertised on um, Midtown. So obviously, I don't know. But that was Archie Comics. Uh, Image Comics of The Walking Dead issue number 143. Rick is actually more uh, like from what you said he was being a jerk. He was actually being more uh, understanding wise like we get alpha who goes to their fair and everything for like one page or so and then we get um why do i keep forgetting his name um his name oh israel yeah Eze I, ezekiel <laughs> ezekiel yeah he's just mm -hmm. trying to uh you know like his friend pete's telling me you know, michonne still loves you and everything you should never forget that and there's just a whole bunch of dialogue and meanwhile, Rick, Michonne, and the rest of them are looking for uh, Carl. They walk into the walker who talks because they're from the uh, group. And uh, here's some artwork, which is all in black and white. And uh, as uh, that happens, Rick and his son Carl reunite with each other. And uh, I thought that was uh, 
Very nice scene. We get a little bit of a uh, Eugene and um, I can't remember her name for life. Of me. I Rosalina? think uh, Rosalina. Was something like that. No, I think Maggie probably or something like that. Right, right. But yeah, whatever her name was, we get a little bit of a moment there. And Rick's just saying, you know, I can't come back with you because, you know, I can't leave J Lydia here. And um, he's like saying, you know, these people here are dangerous. And Carl's just saying, you know, like he gets mad at his father because he's like saying, you know, like yeah, I could see in your eyes right now, like uh, you want me just to hide the way I really look. And Lydia accepted him for the way he looked because not a lot of people accepted the way Carl looked. So the reason why he wants to stay with her is because... She sees him as just a normal person, not just the one with the eye uh, problem or the without the eye socket and everything. So Rick understands him, and um, there's just a lot of uh, stuff that uh, they're being basically held captive, Rick, by uh, Alpha and the team. And well, let's just say in the end. There's uh, something uh, if there should be trouble in the group for consequences. Those are walkers. All thousands and thousands of them. Deeper hole he dug himself in. But also a great issue of The Walking Dead. This next one is your book from Image. Spawn 253. Uh, in this issue, Spawn, um, it's really focused more on Al's father, who passes away at the very beginning of the issue. However, we all know Hell wants Spawn back. They want Al Simmons back. And what they want to do is they want to prevent the father from reaching his judgment point, which is the point where basically, you know in the cartoons where you get to that point right by the, the, the gate, whether you go up to heaven or down to hell? Yeah. Well, the demons... Um, want to take Al Simmons' father before he makes it to his point of judgment and then use him as leverage to get Al, to get what they want from Al. So it's up to Al, who is only as Spawn in this book, and the writing is very, he's very cold towards his father, and anybody who knows Spawn knows about his background. His father was very cold to him. His mother was um, a drunk. So the father thinks that Al is there for them to reconcile, that God sent Al... Um, to, um, you know, to, to help, you know, um, forgiveness, to get forgiveness from Al. And Al's like, God didn't send me. I'm only here to make sure you make it to your judgment point. I'm not here to absolve you, and I'm not here um, to reconcile. And um, a huge fight does break out between Al and I forgot what this guy's name was, Bill, Belia? The lion? I want to say his name right. Oh, here we go. Belial. Yeah. And Belial wants Al's father's soul. Belial is obviously um, the one that takes the um, souls to hell. Al says, no, he needs to be judged. He's not yours, and I don't need the leverage. Um, and then he threatens him with God's sword, and that's where Belial actually says, God swore he'd never interfere. Um, the rule's been broken, and then he runs off. So Al brings his father to a judgment point. Um, the father says he's sorry, and he says, I wish you uh, you had said that years ago. And it just ends with Al's father leaving. So he passes away, and he says goodbye to Al. Al says nothing, and then after the father leaves, he says, bye, Dad. And that was it. Mm -hmm. So it's a good issue. You can see that each issue he's looking to further his fight against... Um, the darkness that's been slowly taking over the world as he's been since he's been away. So now he's trying to make sure he's trying to fix everything. I'm loving Spawn. It's great to have Al back. The weird thing is though, I still it's taking time for me to get used to the mouth, which obviously it's like Venom. You know, the yeah, original Spawn had no that. mouth, had no uh, teeth. He just he had a mask. He just had like the full mask. So it's taking time for me to really. Um, Maybe they want to make him look more serious. I don't know, the teeth don't make me feel that way. But anyway, Rim Fairy Tales presents The Little Mermaid, issue number five, the grand finale. Erica escapes, but her father attacks at the exact same moment. And she hears this voice, Ursula, who actually says that she'll never truly be free. And she doesn't understand what that means. And she will towards the 
middle uh, or towards the end of the issue. But the fight between the father and the scientist is going on, and that's when Erica actually decides to return to make sure that this guy never comes after her again. And then she meets her father, and there's like that happy moment, and then the scientist tries to kill her, and spoiler alert, the father jumps in, and he ends up dying instead. And Erica makes sure that that scientist, I keep forgetting his name, but she makes sure he'll never... Um, hurt anybody or go after her again and she becomes the queen of Atlantis so even though she's free she's now in a different type she's trapped in a different kind of way she wanted to be free to do whatever she wants but now she's trapped as the queen of Atlantis and she's not ready to give up her freedom yet the end but is it the end but question mark so there may be another there may be a follow-up and Meredith Finch, oh, another, better, uh, another, another volume, volume. Yeah. and I pray that Meredith Finch is the one writing it because this story was excellent. Yeah, also, all Erica, five I heard was really good. Erica got re, uh, re, uh, what do you call, it? reunited with her mother in the, the end of this issue. Also, this was a really great series, and the ending leaves a a door wide open for another um, issue, and I really enjoyed it. If you did not read this, check out the trade paperback. Little Mermaid was an excellent. Mini series out of Zenoscope, Meredith Finch knocked it out of the park. All right, Realm War: Age of Darkness, issue number ten of twelve. Only two more, two more issues left until uh, we conclude the whole uh, Realm War. Can't believe it's almost been a year actually, with uh, all twelve issues. So, in this Realm War, um, we uh, see that uh, there are all these uh, demonic forces that are. Uh, like um, attacking uh, Sila and the group. Uh, meanwhile, we have um, like first of all, there's lots of great artwork here, by the way. And uh, this one character, I can't remember what her name is. Um, she actually uh, switches powers with uh, Sila to give uh, her powers uh, of uh, magic and stuff, like all the green magic. Uh, Rachel, her name is. And uh, it's like really, really powerful. And this Dark Queen, oh, I really hate this Dark Queen. Like, she gives uh, Cindy a job to be a messenger to tell Sila that, uh, you know, the end game is coming for you and uh, we're going to be rules of the new world. And of course, Cinderella's not just going to go there to be a messenger, she's going there to actually fight Sila as well as that. And, um,. Also, uh, what the Dark Queen said uh, as well. So, a big fight ensues with uh, Robin, Hercules, and... Um, oh, why do I forget his name all of a sudden? Uh, that Cinderella brought her own group with her. And uh, the fight just uh, is really intense. And uh, they almost uh, get um, Sila. But uh, a little help comes along the way. And I'm going to spoil this. Malik, also known as uh, the Dark One, helps out the group and asks Sila if you might help me kill my wife, who is the Dark Queen. About time he gets snapped out of it and kills him. And you know what? I hope he does and then gets a right between the head. Because I would love to see that. Continuing with Xenoscope and a good transition into digital... Also out this week was Grim Fairy Tales Presents Alice in Wonderland 10th Anniversary Special One-Shot. Yeah, and I want to look uh, into this issue. And it's basically uh, this little boy who sees uh, these uh, two boogeymen in this closet. Is it Tweedledee and Tweedledum? I'm just curious. I, I think so. Okay. And uh, this little boy goes to uh, this different universe where uh, she me he meets up with this little girl named Alice. And Alice just says, you know, um, she talks about her land, and she has this uh, weird-looking blue pet of some type that could uh, see through him and everything. And she says to stay away from the blue bug because the bug could turn him evil and whatnot. And we go into the little boy's life. We find out his end, uh, at the end of the story, his name is John, just to let you know that. But, uh... So then uh, he goes back to her world and uh, talks about, like, uh you know, all the uh, stuff that he's been through, like getting married and uh, starting a new career job and everything else. Just basically, he grows up, but Alice just grows up 
only by a little. And um, we get a little bit of a backstory about John, actually, where he becomes a clown after being uh, in trouble with the uh, police of uh, some sort. And uh, as the story uh, keeps going on, he uh, meets up with this guy in the middle of the road to uh, help him out, actually. And the blue, and he's asking Blue Bug, you know, where Alice is, because Alice wanted to go into his world, known as the real world. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like when he goes back to the real world, uh, he sees like blood all over his hands when he killed the guy who he met on the road. He does meet up with Alice again, but Alice is like, oh, like, oh, who are you? I never met you before. And he, and he remembers her. So it took the bug to actually come in saying, oh, come on, I erased your memory, so I'm going to give it back. You two are supposed to get together. And uh, let's just say it gets a little uh, <laughs> very, very graphic in some ways. But she sort of remembers a little bit and saying that this blue bug, I knew that they would, he would turn against you and everything, like, or to turn you against me because of turning evil and everything. And he doesn't realize that. So in... As a consequence, John's being sent to the real world where he gets in trouble with the policeman because of the murder. And Alice is stuck in the other real world. And yeah, so his full name is at the end of the thing. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, I think. So that was like a really great book. <clears throat> Xenoscope with their one-shots. I'm really looking forward to the uh, next one-shot, which I believe is Sila's story. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be looking forward to reading that. All right, we're yeah. in Boom Studios. UFOlogy issue number three of, I believe, six. Yeah, yes, three, three or six. six. And in this story, uh, we get um, the boy's name. Oh, why is this game? I just had it and it just left. Uh, oh, I just had it in my head and I can't remember. But anyway, he has to talk with his father about uh, you know all the stuff that's been going on, and of course nobody believes him because of all that. And we have the girl who still has that symbol on the side of her head and keeps a bandage, but it glows actually um, out of it. So they're trying to find out, you know, uh, more. I think his name is Mel, probably well, Malcolm. I think his name is, and. Um, you know, just the whole thing where she's trying to accept the fact that there's this thing on the side of her face that's glowing. And they're trying to find out uh, more of this, uh, which we'll call it, this, this thing that happened a few nights ago with uh, these, um, how can I say this, um, like uh, if there was a different life form on uh, where the accident was. So, uh, Malcolm talks to the girl, if that's his name, and says, you know, just come with me because, uh, Becky, he says, he says, I believe you and everything, uh, we'll go check out the investigations and whatnot, so we could, uh, see what happens there. We get a little bit of a backstory of what happens before, uh, he was born, actually, which was really interesting, and that's really it, like, he's just trying to, uh, get in contact with her to just say, you know, that it's time to, uh, you know, do that. But let's just say that they yeah, meet up yeah. with uh, weird alien creatures and say not to be afraid. If I saw them, I'd be like, okay, you're weird, so I'm just going to walk that way. Have a good night and a pleasant tomorrow, if you see tomorrow. Now, I thought this came out last week. I guess I was wrong. Escape from New York, issue number seven. How was that? Yeah. This one, I don't know. Like, I'm feeling a little eh with this issue. Like, first of all, the dialogue is very, very heavy dialogue. And what it is, is that they're still fighting in this war against uh, Russia. Because, uh, you know, um, Snake is USA. So, uh, there's like these, uh, weird glove powers, actually, that, uh, appear in this issue that can break the walls and stuff, and mm -hmm. he meets up with this person, actually, who, uh, has control of it. But it's really more along the lines of just them trying to find a way to defeat Russia. I think it's Russia, I don't know, but I believe it is that. And it's just so much I had to take in, it's just... I don't know. It's just that they want to bring like more excitement to the war when they meet up with this uh, 
leader of some type of clan or something. I don't know. If the story gets a little bit dwindling where I'm not getting to the point where I'm not understanding it or if it's just getting to the point where it's getting a little bit downhill, mm. then I might have to drop it. But it's very really sad because I enjoyed the issues before and I don't know. And it would be really sad to see this go. If, if possible, the next issue might save it. Alright, this isn't going to be a review, it's more of an honorable mention. Halo uh, Escalation issue number 19. Uh, for those of you Halo fans, uh, Professor Halsey loses her arm uh, from the events in the last issue. Her and the Arbiter, well, not the Arbiter, I forgot um, what the... What the, um, <coughs> the, um, the grunts? Not the grunt, the um, elite name was, but they're still chasing after the artifact. Um, its origin, and the UNSC is chasing after them. Um, the elite is warned by the person who is fighting against them that they were going to get a reckoning for what they've been doing, and in the end, that's exactly what it looks like. Did they have all the ST like. uh, people in it? No. Oh, they look like them. There are Spartans in it, but no ODST. Yeah. It's a really enjoyable series, but again, more along the lines of a book I read. There are several comic books uh, I do read. Uh, this, uh, Lady Sonia, and a few other books I read just out of pure, you know, enjoyment. And some of the books Michael reviews, I read just for enjoyment. I really don't review them too much. Uh, the reason I give an honorable mention to Halo is because Halo 5, which we will be getting soon, uh, is coming out in, I, I want to say November, but I'm, I don't know if it's November or October. I think it was um, November. Okay, if so I November. if I remember, so I we will be, be uh, covering that game on Frontline Gaming Zone. Um, we've covered every single Halo game, <clears throat> actually up till four. We actually have to do four also, but we've covered a lot of those games. Uh, so I'm merely uh, mentioning it because the game is coming out, and for Halo fans like myself, it is a fun uh, comic, just like Peanuts and Garfield. Guilty pleasure. Yeah. So now we're in Dark Horse Tomb Raiders. Well, we were in Dark 17. Horse with Halo, number 17. Yeah, and in Tomb Raiders, uh, we actually find out who the guy is. Apparently, it's not Richard Croft, which I thought it would be. Uh, it's I actually... It well, I know. It's actually the guy who uh, uh, she met with, but he says it's not really um, his uh, usual name. Like he, It's something about like hiding his name or whatnot. And Laura Croft doing her thing, just escaping from there. Just to uh, like get out of there. It's just like a long talk between them, you know, about uh, you know the place with snakes and everything, and um, like you know, like like they get to know each other a little bit more about uh, you know who they are and whatnot, and they learn from the soldiers that um, you know whoever got buried in the ditch, there's no way they could get out of there and stuff like that, and ironically they managed to get out of there. And uh, get to the beginning point where uh, they make it before the village. So they go on the boat to, uh, you know, uh, one of their uh, friends is, um, well, I think it was in this issue, um, is a, still a little bit weird. I think her name is uh, uh, Katz, I think, or, or Kate, I think. I, I'm trying to remember her name, but she goes to um, try to save her. Yeah, it is this issue. Try to save her from the uh, group of uh, these uh, people who have her kidnapped. And uh, these two cats also appear. I, I don't know how they came up with that, but okay. And uh, they save her from all that with all these explosions. And uh, she really gets in some action. Wait, Sam. That's her name. Sam. I thought it was Kate. I don't know why. But Sam actually uh, gets out of there. And... Her character gets just weirder and weirder. I don't know why. And the lady who actually kidnapped them is just... I have a funny feeling this isn't going to be the last time we see her for some reason. But what I meant about Sam's character, she sees something really, really weird in the end. I don't want to give that away because I want you guys to definitely read this book. So it, it, it's half and half. But like I said, I'd rather get it digitally because, you know, I still miss Gail Simone's writing of Tomb Raider, but... This makes do for now. Now, this is sad, and we actually just got the first trade oh, paperback. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We're now in Dynamite Comics, or Dynamite Entertainment, I should... Oh, no, we're still in Dark Horse. I apologize. Dark Horse, yeah. Oh, what's wrong with me? Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, issue number 24, the final issue. Or is it really? Because there might be another follow-up, but I'll explain why in the end. 
So Captain Midnight is fighting against uh, the what were they called now? The um, wow, what is going on with me and names? Not Chuck Ramsey. Uh, it was uh, if I see the name, I'm gonna know what it is. Uh, the uh, it starts with the letter S, I think. Well, he fights off against uh, this guy who we fought from uh, in the last issue, and uh, with his new suit and everything. Archon. The Archons. Thank you. It started with the A, actually. The Archon. So he fights the leader of the Archon, and it was like an amazing fight scene. And the artwork's really amazing, and uh, you know, just exchanging blows with each other. You know, you couldn't tell who would actually win because between Captain Midnight's new suit facing the Archon was just, it was outrageous and really something. And thinking that we think that Captain Midnight's actually dead after he uh, did this whole sacrifice, he really actually is not, even though other people think he is because, at, I left the a uh, lot of parts because it's really just fighting, we find out that not only are they making their own group of the Archons that look like uh, Archon, but we actually see him at the end of the story with Charlotte uh, and th those other two. And there might be a story, and I have a funny feeling it's going to be called the Secret Squadron. The end for I now, have a feeling because yeah. it looks he like it's setting up. Team. Yeah, I mean it's an open door right there that made me say, "Yeah, it's the end for now." Meaning that they're going to go Squadron. into Secret Squadron. And if that comes out, I am definitely going to uh, review that uh, digitally, or if we get physically, depending on whichever we do. All right, John Carter, Warlord of Mars, oh. issue number eight. Yeah, can we? No, we actually will wait. Uh, give us okay. two seconds, and then we will continue with this. All right. So now we were talking about John Carter, Warlord of Mars, issue number eight. Yes. And and as know. always, this is excellent. And <laughs> wait, till I tell you the ending so, part. Let's go. But I'm going. So it starts off with um, like uh, there's like something that's uh, going on in uh, their land and everything, in and this town, in yeah. the town. And they're trying to find out, you know, what it is. So they see this being or this uh, thing. It was actually years ago, and it shows a story of uh, Deja Torres' uh, background story. And John Carter and Deja Torres are just going on their uh, honeymoon trip and everything. All right? Yep. Oh. They're still and, on their trip. Yeah. yeah. And they're trying to, you know, be like in a peaceful place, you know, with less carnage and everything. And, uh,. They actually uh, come across these people who uh, they uh, need help of uh, some type, uh, Tulan. And Tulan d didn't know who they were, but when he they said they were John Connor and uh, Deja Torres, they just said, like, there's this whole uh, heart of darkness that has come to our place that uh, has been, uh, like, taking, uh, how's it say? It was like the work of... Uh, some spirits and stuff like that and uh everything was just total chaotic with this uh demonic being there so uh you know we get uh more of an appearance of him that attacks john carter and Deja torres's uh tent while they were sleeping and we get a little bit of a fight scene between the both of them and Deja torres gets involved and who did see this coming she gets kidnapped. For how many times have we have to see you get kidnapped? It's like Mario. It, it's like Mario, Legend of Zelda, and all those other games. Seriously. Just stop kidnapping the poor woman, Teacher. Though. I feel bad for her because the poor woman gets kidnapped and John, John Carter has to save her. You know? That's what you get for being a princess, I guess, but... Just saying. I really enjoyed this, and this really gives me a, a whole new respect for Steampunk. <clears throat> Legendary Green Hornet, Issue 5. This is the final issue of the Legendary Steampunk Adventure of Green Hornet. I love the... The thing I like most about this um, this comic book is I like his personality. Green Hornet kind of has a Spider-Man-esque uh, personality mm -hmm. where he cracks a lot more jokes. He's a lot more sarcastic than what we see in the regular Green Hornet series. 
I like that aspect a bit more than the dark, gritty, you know, villain who, you know, super or hero who pretends to be a villain. Okay. So I like that per the personality. So him and the brass hornet go to the lady, the the veiled lady's uh, apartment. I'm not gonna say what happens to Clockwork either, but oh boy, um, mm -hmm. he, let's just say it was very explosive. Very explosive. So anyway, they find the veiled lady, and that's where the murder king or prince or whatever you want to call him. He's already there, and he wants to kill her because she killed his father. Brass Hornet wants to kill her because she's the reason why her brother died, and Green Hornet's the only one that doesn't want her to die. <laughs> but unfortunately, so they're just killing them because oh, they did this, so she did that. Wow. Well, Green Hornet gets the Murder King away from the Veiled Lady, knocks him out, and then Brass Hornet goes to punch uh, the Veiled Lady, Ooh. and that's when her husband shows up. Uh -huh. And the husband, I forget what his name is, but we get the big reveal here. And um, I'm trying to get the. Oh, well, he's. Black Mass. Black Mass. And basically, they try to hurt him, and it doesn't work. Uh, Green Hornet and Brass Hornet get easily slapped. Then they find out if they hurt the, fa the Veiled Lady, though, that it hurts Black Mass. So. Uh, Green Hornet fights Black Mass while the while the Veiled Lady fights Brass Hornet, and the way they get rid of both of them is Brass Hornet says, "I wonder if I kill your wife, if that would kill you. So either leave or die." So they leave. They end up leaving, and the rest of the book is really just a um, epilogue, you know, moving forward from the events. Obviously, it's the end of the series. Uh, Bra um, Black Mass does threaten to return, so there is a door wide open again for a um, continuation of the series. Maybe there will be a continuation of the series. Maybe this is just the end of the first story arc. But I really like this story. Mai and um, uh, Kato at the end of this book have a really awesome moment together. Um, the ending just excellent excellent stuff uh, oh, and also the, the black beauty gets a little bit of an uh, upgrade let's put it that way and uh, again I love the personality of the Green Hornet in this book I really do I could read this I could this could be definitely one of my favorite books out of dynamite um, if it was a continual ongoing series I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe it is an ongoing series if so I look forward to issue six if not I hope we get another volume soon okay Final book from Dynamite, and Shadow keeps getting those one-shots. Yeah. The Shadow, number 100. And I could just sum up the whole thing, because first of all, it has, like, I believe, five stories, and it just talks about the Shadow stopping people from doing what, like, you know, the Shadow knows, and yada yada. It just stops people from, you know, doing, uh, like, whether it be... Uh, them doing drugs or that or stopping them from committing a crime that happened. I do like how Lamont uh, Cran, Cran Creston. Yeah, they they do have his character along with his wife uh, Margie. It's all the so, artists that have done previous Green uh, 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 Shadow books. Yeah, I, I was looking the at the artwork and like saying, oh, this art looks familiar, probably from the others. So it wasn't just me. Okay then. So uh, and it's just him going to people uh, to question them about the certain crimes that have been happening. And this is in different stories, just saying. So it's not... It's not really just saying, you know, what it's about. Because what I saw while reading all these uh, 48 pages was just him going out on a crime, or, or him fighting crime, I should say, or finding out answers that lead into crime that brings them into justice by either killing them which he is known to do, or uh, just say the shadow knows all and you got to suffer the consequences. And then in the end it gives a little bit more of the character and other stuff, which is why it was an extra other pages of 48, which I did read also. And the shadow knows, so kudos to uh, the team, uh, creative team, who have made 100 issues to the shadow and... Uh, Let's hope we get more of them shadow stories. Jungle Girl Season 3, Issue Number 3. Yeah, in the last issue, we see Jungle Girl... Oh, hold on. The Land of the Dirt People. They uh, went to the Land of the Dirt People. 
to find out more answers from what we saw in the last issue uh, from this big, uh, huge guy who actually uh, says, you don't belong here, and uh, they basically decapitate his head. It's very graphic, this uh, comic book. And they're like saying, you will fail, Jungle Girl, with uh, what they're doing. And what they're doing is that they're looking for, I believe, a certain artifact, I believe it was, because I, I see them going against these creatures, like, in almost every page, for me to say, like, okay, I think, I know what they're going for, but they run into this. And it, it just threw they me keep off. running into yeah, It just things. threw me off a little bit, not too much, but oh, it is an artifact, yeah. So they're looking for this artifact. And this guy who he's uh, using a, a hologram for, like saying, you know, you must uh, leave the temple with it, and you have to give it to me. Uh, go up. I believe it's no, no right, right there. The no, down more. The where it's blue. I'll keep going. I'll tell you when. Like right there. Jana. Jana, yeah. So he tells Jana, <laughs> who is Jungle Girl, to just go quickly out of there. But uh, there's going to be a little time left due to the fact that they run into some uh, big, big problems. And you can't call the exterminator to kill it. I'm just saying you can't call the exterminator because it's this big, huge book. Now, I stuff. accidentally put this out of order, I guess, but another book from Dark Horse that I uh, forgot to mention. Oh. It's number one, Mulan Revelations. Yes, and I did read this book. The artwork looks really good. Yeah, I figured uh, I would give it a try. I'm going to read it after mm -hmm. a review. The artwork is excellent. It's basically talking about the story of uh, you know Mulan, who uh, like gets a. Uh, it's more of like a, a calling that someone gives to her to say uh, you know you must come with me because uh, you know um, you, you're like a one of like you were chosen basically. Uh, and then they brought her to like Shanghai, where uh, she learns more about her powers and who in the she future. is in the future. And she's more of a, uh, you know, the main person uh, there. Like I think a queen, basically, almost. And uh, she has a sister who uh, is really, you know, like always asking for money and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, one last time is never last time. And then uh, we get some people who she meets up with and uh, basically a mission that um, they give her to do. And uh, it, it's more along lines of uh, just um, helping people because I think she's known to be a healer as well. So, um, you know, as the story continues on, uh, it builds up to like saying, okay, something big is going to happen in the end. She's not a big fan of guns. And I was sure right, because in the next issue, there's going to be lots of uh, shootings and stuff. I don't want to give too much away of the story, because it is the first issue, and I want you guys to definitely read it. We're now in Valiant, and guys, really soon, uh, as we are dropping a few books recently, there are a lot of books ending, a lot of books that we didn't decide to keep going, there will be some Valiant books, finally, that will be entering our physical pile. Uh, I'm not going to say which ones, I want to leave that um, as a um, open. You'll see as time moves forward, uh, it's going to basically start around this month, where we'll start grabbing some physical books, and... The books that we have reviewed from Valiant, I feel like I can say this because we've you know, yeah, got yeah, time yeah. still. Uh, the digital books that we have reviewed from Valiant, uh, the ones that we really like, like EXO and Armor Wars and Unity, uh, up to this point, whatever we uh, haven't collected in single issues, we will collect in trade paperbacks. So at least we'll have a physical copy of everything. Um, I will say this about Valiant, 90% of the stuff, uh, I w for me, I would say 80 Michael likes a lot, a lot of the other extra series, oh, yeah. but for me, okay. I'm loving EXO, I'm loving Ninjak, I'm loving uh, the way Death, uh, Dead Spot's going right now. Unity, Dead Hand? Dead ha no, Dead... 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 Um, Deathlock? Death, not Deathlock, um, Bloods... The one we just reviewed it last week, Reborn. Oh, Bloodshot. It is Bloodshot. Bloodshot, oh, Reborn. Oh, you didn't say Bloodshot. Um... The Eternal Warrior. So there will be some physical books that will yeah. start coming up, and then from there we'll be backtracking as the years go on uh, to get the uh, previous issues in trade paperback form. But anyway, let's waste no time. Ninjak is definitely a book that I love, that Mike loves, and this mm -hmm. is issue number four. 
Yeah, and it didn't really focus on Ninjak at all. It was just about this uh, red girl. woman. Yeah, this girl. And uh, let me tell you, she could actually pass up to be another ninja. Well, that's why they're focusing on her. Right. If you saw the first issue, the variant had her inside. Well, just, yeah, I, I actually uh, kind of remember actually that. But yeah, but it talks about her character. And uh, like I said, you could swear that she could be the next ninja. Because she uh, got all these powers. She's bandaged up like really badly after coming uh, out of the ground and stuff like that. And she has these moves that, you know, like, she could just get out of them, like, one, two, three, which it does show. And a lot of the people who she mean, like, saying, like, uh, oh, I'm hungry for you, and da-da-da-da, it's like, uh, we've been seeing that, like, twice, and, like, saying, Is she okay, going through the deadly sins? I don't think so. Not that I know of. Okay. But, yeah, but uh, she actually just gets through them. And uh, she's a really uh, tough woman. Let me let me tell you that. And her name is uh, Ruko. Roku Roku. I'll call her Roku because uh, it's a long name. So uh, Roku. Um, Roku Roku B. Well, basically, she makes it to uh, the ranks uh, on top because uh, that's what it really was. And she meets with Ninjak. And at she the does end. meet with Ninjak, like saying, you know. Uh, you honor what you have, so tell me before uh, before he died. You die, like, yeah. Oh, like, what is your real name? Tell me before you die. So she wants to know more about Ninjak. And then we get into the second story where I really didn't, like, look into it not as much. Not much of a care for it. it yeah. It's not really much of a care for it. It's just, like, a little bit of a follow-up in Ninjak, but it doesn't really... It's not like you have to read it, but um, it more along lines is just leading. Let's just say it leads to the next issue. Issue number of five. Of Ninjak number five. At but, the end of July. Right. Oh, wow, the end of July. Oh, wow. July 29th. Yeah. All right, guys, so that's, that's it, it for this indie comic book review. As always, don't forget to check out Comic Related, Comic Frontline Zone 4 Podcast, and Frontline Gaming Zone. Together, we are your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Feel free to comment below. Likes, dislikes, agree, disagree, recommendations. And uh, we will get back to you guys in the comments below. Stay tuned for more stuff. Big 2 review should be coming real soon, mm -hmm. as in tomorrow real soon. And um, I'll keep you guys posted about Friday. I believe we are uh, going to be touching on San Diego this weekend. So um, stay tuned on Twitter. Yep. Till then, take care, keep reading, keep collecting. We'll see you guys in the next review. Later, everybody.